course not. But children always go to the seaside. Not this time. Just for once, the grown-ups go to the seaside and the children stay at home. It's not fair. No, it's not. Oh, stop grizzling the pair of you. You wouldn't like it if you did come. Who ever heard of children on an old-age pensioner's outing? I'll tell you what, I might bring you back a stick of rock. Big deal. What are we supposed to do all day long while you're off enjoying yourself? Oh, there are 101 things you can find to do on a farm. Go and have a look at the scarecrow. <laughs> oh, that'll take them all of two minutes. Oh, no, Mr Peters, they talk to that scarecrow for hours. Haven't you seen them? They make believe it's a friend of theirs, don't you? That's right. We call it Zag. Yes. Come on, Sue. And don't forget the rock. Oh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think he's gone? How should I know? I'll give you three guesses. All folks outing. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Come well, on, Mrs. Lavathor. Take care. Now, be careful of that stair. Are you all right? There it is. Oh, there it is. Oh, there it is. Stop your scratching and scratching and rubbing, Rick Bill. That tickles my stomach, so you don't. Don't you tick it all? Yes. If you don't stop that flittering and flattering, I won't take you to the seesaw. The seesaw? Ah. You're a bit long in the tooth, aren't you, to think about going on a seesaw? What's wrong with you, you old scrampit? We're all going to the seesaw, aren't we? To the seesaw? What's the matter with them? Oh, he's just a bit mazed. We're going to the seaside. I know, you don't have to shout. I'm not deaf. Well, then, you know all about the seaside, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. It's been there hundreds of times. Every Christmas, as a matter of fact. I always go to the seesaw for my Christmas holidays. Right, Here we go. What's your ticket, Dad? What? What's your ticket? Ticket? What ticket? You don't need no ticket to go to the seesaw. No, but you need a ticket to get on the coach. Didn't the vicar give you one? Vicar? Wouldn't give me the time of day, the vicar wouldn't. Well, I'm sorry, but all the seats are booked. Well, well how am I going to make a sand pie, then? Well, you can't make a sand pie unless you go to the seesaw. What well, stands to reason? Sorry. Better luck next time. Well... All right, that'll do. On your way. Wow. Yeah, pesky old boss. Who wants to go on your pesky old boss anyway? I got a good man let your tires down. Yeah. How's the old crams? You'll love it. Eh? Seagulls. Ha! Must be the seesaw. Hey! Hey! This is the seesaw! Uh, look at this, mate! 
fireworks. So, come on, let's go have a time on this week's Can I have your attention, everybody, please? As it's nearly 12 o'clock, we thought we'd go straight down to the beach and start our picnic. Now, I want two volunteers to carry the hampers. Leave that to us, Mrs. Braithwaite, as long as we get extra rations. I'll carry the beer crates, Mrs. Braithwaite. Oh, I'll be looking after that, Mrs. Braithwaite. Yes, that's what I was afraid of. Uh, oh, don't forget to tell them about the tobacco, Mrs. B. Oh, yes, there's half an ounce of tobacco for everyone who smokes and boiled sweets and fruit for those who don't. Come on now. First come, first serve. <laughs> Isn't that the chap that tried to catch a lift this morning? Can't be, not unless he flew here. <laughs> well, I'm blue! It's gone. All of it. The old blessed lot! Oi! It's seagulls. What? Seagulls. Seagulls? Oh, I leave environments they are, my dear. You take my word for it. You keep an eye out for a seagull with cake crumbs on his beak. Mrs. Braithwaite! Mr. Mr. Peters! Welcome aboard the Saucy Nancy. Ten pence. See over the historic ship. Have your photo took with the Saucy Nancy, ladies. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, is this what they call a ship? What's it look like? A blooming telephone box? Ten pence, please. Oh, ten pence in that stuff. Where's she going then? She ain't going nowhere. Ah, oh, just as well. I ain't got ten pence anyway. Then you better shove off. It's a very nice peg leg you got there, sir. Is you a scarecrow by any chance? I'm warning you, you better push off. Because if you're a scarecrow, you ain't doing a very good job scaring them girls, is you? What are you laughing at? <laughs> He's laughing at you, you great lummock. You call yourself a scarecrow when you got a great red and green seagull sitting over there squawking his blooming head off. You better push off or you'll feel the toe of my boot. Another squawk out of you and I'll put a bag over your head. Well, I'll be buzzing my coo. Ahoy there, shipmate! How'd you do that without moving your beak? Think of it, I didn't talk at all. You've just been a stupid old bird. It's not him, it's me, you turnip headed land lover. Over here! Mm -hmm. Well, I'll go to market in a basket of duck eggs. Well, before you dance, have you got any tobacco? Oh, I, as a matter of fact, I have. I found some tucked away in a picnic basket. It ain't very nice to eat, though. Tastes nice if you choose it proper, but I don't chew it. I smokes it. Oh, you don't want to do that, missus. No, you might set your head on fire. Here out comes you speak yakety, like what the humans does. Well, who taught you? The crow man taught me. Well, then. Oh, I didn't know he had the pleasure and the privilege of meeting his prominence, the crow man. I mean, you ain't a scarecrow, is you? Well, I was going to be after the last voyage. They were going to put me on the allotments to keep the gulls off of the radishes. But then the captain says, no, he says, blow me down, he says. I'll keep her, he says. And here I am. Well, where's the backy then? Well, what have you got for me? Umbugs. Oh, I, I love some bugs. Chuck them over. Hey, umbugs. With my ambugs and your backy, we makes the fine pair. So how about you and me getting married? <laughs> getting married? I can't marry you, missus. I'm spoken for. <laughs> spoken for? Who damn you? Set me, that is. Aunt Sally. That's who'd have me. Well, if I knowed where she was, that is. I think she went to America. Else Egypt. Oh, no. She ain't in America, dearie. No. Cos I've been there and I'd have seen her. Been all over, I have. Iceland, Denmark, Portsmouth, and I haven't seen her nowhere. She's probably drowned so you might as well marry your saucy Nancy. Oh, you don't want to marry me, missus. I'm too stupid. 
I'll tell you how stupid your words will come at you. Do you know the very first time I heard you talk, I thought it was that there red and green seagull. <laughs> That's how stupid I am, thinking a seagull could talk. Shut your beak! Oh, I'm starving. If I catch the scallywag that stole our lunches, I'll throttle him. Well, no use crying over spilt chicken bones, Mrs B. We just have to find somewhere that serves food. What, a cafe? Well, not necessarily a cafe. Uh, shall I explore? Oh, just a minute. I want to show you something first. Just wait here a minute. We want to open this up. We don't want to be here all night. Look, uh, get those grapes over there. Here, what do you want? What are you gawping at? Oh, nothing. No, just looking. You did it finished? Oh, don't go. Very nice, Percy. Good, isn't it? Mr. Peters, now, is that or isn't it the Aunt Sally that Mr. Shepherd used to own? Could be. Uh, he might have sold it. He didn't sell it. It was stolen. He used to keep it in a trunk in the attic, and then he went up there one day and it had walked. Well, I wouldn't go making any accusations, Mr. Braithwaite. They can turn very nasty, these fairground people. Come on, let's explore the food situation. <laughs> So I'll tell you what let it down, Gov. Who? Hmm? That old Aunt Sally. She looks a right mess. So would you if you'd been fished out the sea. She needs a lick of paint, that's all. No problem, Gov. <sighs> Not you, Percy. That's a craftsman's job. The chap who paints the carousel. He'll do that. Uh, dump it in the skip and I'll take her round to him tonight. Right, on, Gov. Excuse me, Missy. Yes, dearie. But why pour you hanging onto my arm? I mean, you ain't gonna fall over, is it? That's as may be. Got no legs, you see. Of course you've got legs. Everyone has legs. Except there may be worms, and they don't need them. Neither does Vicar his. Lash it to the prow of a schooner in North Sea Gale, and you wouldn't need no legs neither. Second sea legs, that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you get on then if you ain't got no legs? Well, I shouldn't really show you till we're married. But as it's you, I'll let you have a little peace. <laughs> well, now you've seen me, Wills, you'll have to marry me. I keep telling you, I'm going to marry Aunt Sally. And I keep telling you that she's drowned. So give me one good reason why you can't marry your saucy Nancy. Because you're ugly. Am I really? Oh, thank you. So are you. And it smells of fish. Well, of course I smells a fish. You'd smell a fish if you spent all your life before the mast. Anyway, what's wrong with a bit of fish? I bet you wouldn't say no to some whelks and a pint of winkles, eh? <laughs> that I wouldn't miss it. Well then, I know where there's a whelk stall. Do. <laughs> Here, not so fast. Money first. That's a bit embarrassing. I ain't got no wages, you see. Oh, I got some money, Captain. Keep the change. Here. What's this then? A Spanish doubloon. Found it in a treasure chest 15 fathoms down. Oh, don't take no foreign coins. Go on, sling your hooks. It says here. What you need is a good pair of wheels. Oh, don't argue, Pat. Come on, Aunt Sally. Come on. Come on for us all. Ah, am I pleased to see you, Aunt Sally? Well, I'm not pleased to see you. Let go or I'll pull your stupid head off. Yeah, well, time for fun and games later. We've got to run for it. Here, you two, come back here. But what do you do with my Aunt Sally? I... This is going to take all day. I still think we get better service at the Goat and Compasses, Mrs Braithwaite. And have them all wanting to stop half a dozen times on the way home. Oh, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. I think they've shook them off, shipmates. Yes, they've headed no, no west. <laughs> I suppose you expect me to be grateful. Well, of course I expect you to be grateful, Aunt Sally. I mean, after all, we got you out there cooking that shy, didn't we? Yes, and look at me. Look at the state of me. 
hadn't been for your interference, I'll have you know I was just about to be repainted by the man what owns the carousel. You spoiled everything, as usual. You look as if you could do your barnacle scraping, dearie. What you been doing in the briny? I don't know who this person is, but if it is any of her business, I was floating to Egypt. I was going to marry an Egyptian prince, you know. Then some busybody comes along and fishes me out with a boot hook. Next minute I know I'm having wooden balls thrown at me head again. Yeah, well, never remind, Aunt Sally. You're safe again now. Back with your intended. <laughs> Don't look now, but I think that's him. Are you sure? Mm. Didn't have those two funny-looking women with him last time. It is him, Mr. Peters. It's that thieving vagabond at Pinshaw Picnic. After him, lads. Oh, God, the cups and daisies. Look, they're coming at us like mad Your seesaw they live in. They're all farming. Well, what are we going to do now, me artist? Free? Free? I didn't see any free. I only see my beautiful self and a dirty old scarecrow. <laughs> Don't take the notice of her. <laughs> She's just having a little joke. She sees you all right. Well, she may have lost her paint, but she ain't gone cross-eyed. You don't understand the rules of polite society. If you'd been brought up proper, as I have, you would know that this person doesn't exist until we've been introduced. Oh. So go on, you ignorant great lump of store. Introduce us formally. Certainly, Aunt Sally. Aunt <laughs> uh, Sally, this here's Saucy Nancy. Saucy Nancy, this here's Aunt Sally. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Likewise, dearie. And who's your family, may I beg leave to ask? Did you fall out of a basket of clothes pegs when you was little? Or were you carved by an humble woodcarver what was learning his trade? My family, dear, goes back to the Vikings. You see this face of mine? It's been handed down through the ages. Yes, looks like it. Well, at least it is a face, dearie. It's not been mistaken for the back of a pudding spoon. Unlike some faces not a hundred nautical miles from here. Russell, I refuse to be insulted by a piece of driftwood. Take me home at once. Oh, on, Sally. Who's so? You stupid, ignorant scarecrow. You don't suppose I want to go back to that common fairground and have wooden balls thrown at me, do you? Your room, of course. New coat of paint or no new coat of paint. Oh, Aunt Sally, if you knew I'd long to hear those words from your lips. Well, of course I'll take you back to my home, humble though it is, and we'll live there together forever and ever. It's so ridiculous. I could never stay in an humble home forever and ever. I'll just stay with you while I look at property, mansions and places like that. I don't think I've got a mansion to give you, Aunt Sally, but, but you could have my best chair and my best sack of titties for it to sleep on, and you can have me a jog for it to comb your pretty hair with, and, and my best squirrel so you can brush your nice, shiny shoes. You could even have me a little Robin Redbreast, if you like, for it to keep. Put it away. You don't know where it's been. Come along, do. Hold on, the artist. Where do you think you're going? Well, back to Scatterbrook for to get married. Yes. Nice to meet you, Sussie Nancy. It was my pleasure. Oh, I see. So you're going to cast me off like a broken lobster pot? There is a resemblance, now you mention it. I wasn't talking to you, you worm-eating old door knocker. But now that I am talking to you, I'll have you know that this here scarecrow here happens to be my intended. <laughs> be ridiculous! As true what Aunt Sally says, it is ridiculous. I keep telling you, I'm spoken for. Spoken for, is you? Well, you weren't spoken for when you ate all my humbugs, was you? Well, you can have your humbugs back if you like. They're all here in my stomach. Disgusting. 
disgusting. If my intended wants to be disgusting, he'll be disgusting. So you keep your flaky nose out of it. At least I don't have cockles up my nose like some people I could mention. Come on, Wurzel, we're going over. <gasps> oh, no, he ain't. Blood, no, blood. I'm telling you, it's mine. Let's go. It's mine. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I see. Now, are you still trying to tell me that that isn't Mr. Shepherd's Aunt Sally? What's she doing there? Well, what was that gentleman's figurehead doing rolling down the hill? And how can one tramp eat 25 picnics? Strange things happen at the seaside. You say that again. Still, you can't leave a valuable antique lying around here. I'll put your sticks of rock in here, Mr. Peters. OK, Mr. Peters. I think this is Mr. Shepherd's aunt, Sally. Yes, we will be in trouble. Oh, don't say that. We've had enough trouble for one day. <laughs> oh, I spoke too soon. Oh, Mr. Peters! Come here, Mr. Peters! Well, Mummy darling, call me an A-stack. I've been looking everywhere for you, Aunt Sally. Hey, move over. Make room for old words. <laughs> That's it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, here. Have a stick of rock. Right, here we go. Uh, I think she's stuck. She came out. She's got to go in. Uh, I don't know how we're going to get her in. Just a moment. <laughs> stuck her with my winkle pin. Hello, what's this? A welcoming committee. Did you have a nice time? Well, let's say an eventful one. <laughs> Still, I think the old people enjoyed it. <laughs> oh, go and get the supper laid, will you? I'm just popping down the coach and horses. Bit of business to attend to. Did you fetch any rock? It's in the back. It's Aunt Sally. She's eaten half our rock. Yes, she has. And I'll eat the other half. Oh, Wurzel. Well, so... And thanks very much. 